Setting up an Excel spreadsheet to plan out and track your MCAT studying can be difficult at times and usually annoying. After my last video on the resources that I used to score a 520 on the MCAT, I had a lot of you reach out to me and ask how I used Excel to track my study progress and plan out my studying. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use an MCAT study system that I put together and I used a free app that you can get called Notion to make it. If you're new here, my name is Danny Kalani. I'm a first year medical student in Canada. This is the second video in a three part series on studying for the MCAT. The last part will be on MCAT study tips. So if you wanna be notified as soon as that comes out, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. I'll also put a link in the description to the first part if you haven't seen that already. What I've put together is what I call the MCAT study hub. It essentially takes all of the tips and tricks that I suggested in the first video and puts them into one place. To give a brief review of the last video, I recommended taking between one third and two thirds of your study time and putting that towards content review. Whatever time you have left should be going towards practice questions and practice tests. I recommend using the Kaplan box set for the chemistry and physics, as well as the biology and biochemistry section of the MCAT. Then for the psychology and sociology section of the MCAT, I use the 100 page MCAT bros review document. Even though calendars are the mainstay of planning, I don't recommend using them that heavily for your MCAT study plan. Calendars can make it easy to overwhelm yourself with too many tasks at once. Really, you should be using a calendar to keep track of important dates and a to-do list to prioritize what you wanna get done on a day-to-day -day basis. The other two things I emphasize were keeping track of your study progress, as well as noting down mistakes that you make on practice questions or practice tests. Everything we've covered so far is a summary of the previous video, and I'm restating them because each of these points is emphasized in the MCAT study hub in one way or another. Now I'll walk you through the features and how to use it. If you wanna follow along while I walk you through it, once you have a Notion account set up, you just need to follow the link in the description and duplicate my Notion template. Now you're ready to follow along, let's dive into it. Right as you load up the study hub, you'll see a checklist. This is what you can use to plan out your daily tasks the night before. You can also specify the time you want to do the task. Then, as you finish, you can check it off. I also included some links to the resources I used on a daily basis for my studying, like Jack Weston and UWorld. If you're going to be buying the Kaplan and Cat books new, use my link and I get a small commission at no cost to you. It helps me continue to produce high quality content on this channel. If you scroll past these next three tables, we have a calendar. Here we have some preset items that you can add to the calendar. You'll definitely want to add your full length practice exams and your exam date to the calendar. These are the absolute essential events that I suggest you add. Depending on what other practice exams you choose to use, like blueprint or next step exams, you can add more items to the calendar. When adding calendar events, you can also add a reminder so that Notion sends you a notification at a pre-specified time. Again, the checklist should be your go-to tool for planning out your day-to-day -day goals. Before we get into the next three most important features of the study hub, I want to tell you about a Discord that I've started for my viewers. I've just set the server up with the hope that it could be a positive space for me to interact with you and for you to interact with other viewers. On there, I've included some chat rooms for particular topics like the MCAT, extracurriculars, research, and even one where you can just go and ask me any questions you might have. If you're looking for an easy way to reach me, this is definitely it. The link to join is in the description below. And once you get in, make sure to read the rules and then introduce yourself in the introductions chat room. The mistake tracker is a feature that you may not need when you first start studying, but it'll be incredibly useful when you start to work on any sort of practice questions or practice tests. When you're using any of the next three tables in the study hub, you'll probably want to select open as page from the drop down menu to get a more clean look. Here you can write down which questions you've gotten wrong, record what stage of learning it's at, as well as where the question came from in case you ever need to refer back to it. After you've recorded your mistakes and you're ready to review them, you can switch the view to the review mode. Here we have a clear overview of what needs to be reviewed and you can easily drag and drop the topic between the categories of how well you understand it. For example, I can move mitochondria function from requiring complete relearning to requiring review. That way, after learning about the function of the mitochondria, I can come back later and review it once more before moving it under the reviewed column. This will definitely help with tracking your mistakes and making sure that you're aware of what needs some work. Next, we'll take a look at the progress tracker for the Kaplan books, which you'll probably use as soon as you start studying. It's split into five books from the Kaplan box set that I recommend using. 
Each one has 12 chapters and Notion will update this progress bar as you check off that you finished the chapter. There's also a total progress column. Feel free to ignore the numbers here and just look at the sum if you want to know how far you've progressed through all the books. If you open the page associated with any of the books on Notion, I have included a table of contents so that you can easily see what each chapter is about and decide what you're most interested in working on next. You can also switch into the checklist view where you can see the chapters as a checklist. This view is primarily just for updating your progress. The last view is a day planner. Admittedly, it isn't the most useful, but I figured that someone may find it more visually appealing than a checklist. If you're using a different study resource other than Kaplan, this may not work too well. If you want me to make a version for another book set, let me know which one in the comments and I'll see what I can do. The last section is for tracking your progress on the psychology and sociology documents that I mentioned earlier. There are three options for these documents, where the shorter you go, the more the content is summarized. The one you choose to use should depend on how much time you want to spend doing content review. To use this, all you need to do is update your current pages column as you go along the document. If you want links to the document, you can open the page to get the corresponding Dropbox link. With all of that information, you now know how to use the MCAT Study Hub. If there's some features that you'd like to see added, or if you're having some technical difficulties, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you for watching and feel free to check out the first MCAT video that I put out if you haven't seen it already.